Blues Fest is close to getting a bailout from the New South Wales government under a support package aimed at protecting future events. The cancellation of the music festival at the 11th hour has left a massive hole in the local economy. Now the industry is calling for a national scheme to help promoters in other states. Amelia Turzon reports. It's the moment that revellers have been waiting for. It's been a while between gigs. Literally a year. It's been a year. It's yeah. sucked. It is sucked. Oh, you can dance now. It's great. <laughs> but behind the scenes, at one of the first major music festivals during the pandemic, organisers are stressed. We've been through so many cancellations and just so many kind of layers of, you know, just varying degrees of bad news over the last 12 months. I think we're kind of just you're sort of half expecting something to happen. After a year without income, organisers are borrowing cash to put on the show. We've just scrapped around basically and just got it through a cab we could. COVID safe measures have added $1 million in costs and the festival has no event insurance to cover a snap COVID lockdown. It's a gamble. We're basically taking a massive gamble. It's no sure thing for the subcontractors either. Beautiful, mate. Cheers. Thank you. The site's waste manager has already spent 100 grand just to get here. We've got uh, nine large skip bins on site, so that's you know nine, nine truck movements. We've got a cleaning team of around about 65 here today. If, if the festival gets shut down, it's just a massive, massive risk. A risk with known consequences. Just a few weeks ago, the New South Wales government ordered Blues Fest to cancel a day before it was due to open because of one COVID case. Its founder, Peter Noble, and other industry leaders have long been calling for a national business interruption fund to protect their $2.7 billion industry. The New South Wales government is close to finalising an industry scheme to bail out Blues Fest and protect future events. But that won't help festival organisers in other states. When I saw Blues Fest, I was shocked. I was upset for them. But then I guess the next sense was, what does that mean for festivals like us? And, you know, we're all equally as vulnerable as that. It's been 18 months since this park in country Victoria hosted Queenscliff Music Festival. It's up to five or 6,000 people at any one time. It's one of many smaller festivals that's run as a not-for-profit, so the stakes are high. In small towns like this, if the local festival is called off at the 11th hour due to COVID, it's not just company money that's at stake. Community cash will also be lost forever probably would be the end of the festival. So some of the smaller event organisers and festival promoters have really been hit hard. A cost recovery, you know, for all of the losses spent seems appropriate given this industry has faced so much in the last 12 months. The federal government says that's a matter for the states which ultimately decide to cancel major events during COVID. For those already taking the risk, there's a payoff that's worth more than money. Just seeing the reactions from the public and everyone having such a good time, that's what it's all about. We're back, baby. We're back. Clearly the punters hope there's more than one encore. Amelia Turzon there. Just weeks ago, the 